All right, welcome to the Adam DeLonde podcast. Uh, I am Adam DeLonde, and I'm here with Donna Carroll, and she uh, runs Ecstatic Dance down in the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, and your organization is, how do you say the name of your organization? Elixir Dance. Elixir Dance. And we met a while ago through a workshop, and uh, I was really fascinated with what you're doing down there. And of course, that was pre-COVID, and a lot happened in the dance community around COVID, um, shutting down and dealing with that, and then restarting up now and a whole new evolution. And so I thought I'd just ask, start off with that of just how, how are things going down there? What's happening in your area? Yeah, it's been, um, well, it's been interesting to say the least. Uh, it's, it's really fascinating. During COVID, um, we went online and, you know, tried to help people through dance online and we've started up then started up I don't know four or five months now again in Oakland and in Mountain View and um, it feels like it's a chance to do things over again to like restart in a new way around what serves people now and what's needed now and it's a little bit different than what was needed before COVID you know I think people um you know, COVID really impacted a lot of us, um, gave us a lot of fear of each other and fear of connection, fear of being close to each other. And I think um, the dance is a chance for us to reestablish those those bonds with each other and re-experience the, the, the experience of being in close proximity to each other and moving together and doing that with joy and without fear. And so that's the thing that I'm really trying to bring into the dance now is, you know, just the, the openness to being together again. And the dance floor is different too. You know, I think that there's definitely more gratitude. You know, it's like, wow, we get to be together after being apart for so long. And people are slowly coming back. Um, not everyone's ready to come back yet, but people are slowly coming back. And it's really beautiful. It's actually really beautiful to feel that connection, to feel people like re-emerging and re-engaging with this. And I just have so many people that come up and tell me, you know, I haven't danced in three years. Like, thank you for having this back. And and you can see it in their movement and in their faces. And I could feel it when I came back to dance. I didn't, didn't dance much through COVID either. Um, I did other things, but not dance. And so when I came back, it was like, there was this rustiness, like, how does this work again? And how do I move to the music? And who are all these people? And oh my God, are we all going to die? <laughs> and it wasn't like that, you know, after, after the initial shock of it, it was like, oh, thank God we get to dance together again. Yeah, I've, I've uh, spoken to just different uh, people in ecstatic dance and different modalities of dance so far in the podcast and we talked a lot about how uh, dance can really you know when you're starting can be really be vulnerable and new and and kind of working through our personality so to speak and working through our own stories to get to touch into uh, the mystery that we are and whatnot and but what is often that conversation is we entered into we enter into a community that's there that's already there. We, we, they, there's, you know, we witness them and they go, okay, now I'm going to do it. But what I've noticed and what you sounds like, you're saying, it's like we're all new again. It's not just, you know, there's not a group that's been dancing through this necessarily, but now we're kind of all new in this kind of vulnerable place. Yeah. And we get to co create it. That's the thing. Like we get to co create what's needed now. And um, it's the, the, the co creation process is. It's interesting too you know it's like yeah that you're not entering into an established in dance scene maybe people have been dancing together before but even then even then we still enter into it, it when when we can in how I'm different now right I'm different than I was yesterday I'm different than I was five minutes ago I'm certainly different than I was three years ago and so my experience on the dance floor is going to be different my experience dancing with others and interacting with others and my experience with myself and the music and what kind of even what kind of music I'm drawn to is different and you know I had this experience just last night in my Monday night Mountain View dance 
And I'm, I'm normally a pretty solo dancer. I like to like, just get into myself and the music and work things out and, and then get into a flow. And sometimes I can expand and open up after that. And I've recently been doing this morning practice that's got me really centered and grounded. And my experience of the dance has changed so completely. Last night, I was just so available for dancing with other people because I think I didn't need to work through whatever I need to work through. You know, I was already centered. And so I was just available and I had some of the most fun dances that I've ever had <laughs> last night. And it's just, it can be such a joy. It can be such a joy to just like play and frolic around and be like, someone described it as like, this is recess. It feels like recess, you know, and just like, these are all playmates. And, you know, recess wasn't always fun. There were certainly challenges on the playground, but uh, it's, it's meant to be a place for expression, a place for play. Yeah. And that's, it does like life outside of the dance floor almost often mimics on the dance floor. And it feels like there is a, there's a gratitude and a new and a vulnerability and a new sense of of play like of like once we're gra grateful and in that gra gratefulness it's like all right what am I doing now what like what what's new now that things are opening up not not opening up for every you know but like a slow open and mm -hmm. we're expanding into this new place and trying to figure it out it does yeah. feel like a lot of people are in that space of like I want to play <laughs> Well, and also what's important, you know, what matters. It's like we almost had the chance to experience near-death experiences, right? Like we all got shut off from certain parts of life. And now we get to reevaluate and say, well, what does matter? What's important? You know, being with people, moving with people, feeling my own body, feeling my sense of self, experience, having this experience with other people too, you know, playing certainly to the joy from that. And then what... Um what what did you go through through COVID to either shut down and then just to stay with it and come back what was your process with that say I'm I'm going to keep keep coming back to this or what how was that for you? oh I was a freaking mess I don't know <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know I, I'd like to sit here and be like yes it, well, I was so like I learned these new things and I meditated and I no I was just a mess um I, <laughs> so you know I was scared I you know probably made choices out of fear that I wouldn't have made and a lot of that was me pulling back and pulling back into like oh, there's no, you know, and into my negative mindset of like, I can't do the work I need to do. I can't serve in the way that I want to serve. It's just not available for me at that time. And so what I did was I just pulled back and pulled away and just tried to support myself and kind of get through. And, um, you know, I wish that I, I wish I could have said like, yeah, I, I was like showing up and, you know, I, I, I feel that I, I really wasn't, I was just kind of getting through. And that being said, um, Shannon, who's run Ecstatic Dance Oakland for a long time, she ran the online workshops and she air classes every Sunday. And she was there every Sunday and just holding space for people, getting the DJs going. And so, you know, my hat's off to her and the cons consistency which with what she showed up during those times for people. I'm really grateful for that, certainly. Yeah, there's, I'm, there's, I'm pretty amazed with some of the people of what, you know, in the dance community in various locations, how they really had to work to try to. Oh, no, you froze. Make it a go of it. People oh. alive, people going through these. Um, yeah, these and some people got, um, some people yeah. got so <laughs> creative and they did the outside things and, you know, I just, um, yeah, I, I wasn't in the space to be able to do that, but I'm happy to have restarted now. Yeah, I, I was similar. It was, it was definitely a yeah. challenge. I kind of went inward and just yeah. kind of like, okay, I really have to to go in and, and work on myself and, and work on the stability. Like, oh my gosh, there's so much going on and change. And yeah. Have no stability. yeah. Um, you, what was it, start going back even further, what is the journey you had into the, the dance? Uh, um, into ecstatic dance yeah 
or yeah, into dance in general? Into dance in general. Well, I, I first discovered dance, ecstatic dance in particular on the big island of Hawaii back in 2007. And um, I was taking an acro yoga teacher training on the big island. And at our teacher training, they brought us to the dance. And so I discovered the dance there and then decided to stay on the big island for three months after I had been through a big life change. I had just gone through a divorce and I quit my corporate job. And so I was really lost and really not sure where my life was headed or what I was doing. And so I rented a house on the big island for three months after the teacher training. And it was just down the street from the ecstatic dance. And so I went to the ecstatic dance twice a week. And, you know, through the course of the three months, it just opened me and opened me and like, it, it was like just doing its work on me and I was just showing up for it and I had no idea what I was doing, but I was just like, okay. And every time I would feel a little bit more freedom or experience a little more presence or, um, you know, move in a different way than I ever had. And, and through that experience, like, I feel like I found me or I, I was discovering like my embodied self and listening to what my body wanted and, and my wisdom and my intuition and everything that comes with embodiment and so I was like I was on fire when I left the ecstatic when I left the big island and came back to the bay area I was just like this is amazing this is so great and I came back to the bay area and I kept telling everyone that like there's this thing, it's amazing, it's called ecstatic dance, and it's not here, but it's there, but somebody should bring it here, and then eventually after I said that for like the fifth time, I was like, oh, I guess it's me, I'm gonna have to bring it here, because no one else is doing it, and so um, I, I had a partner at the time, and we started it together, and um, it was just incredible, you know, started with 33 people in this giant 12,000 square foot ballroom in Oakland, and just having the vision of what it could be after having experienced it in the Big Island was like, it just kept me going. Like, I know that this is possible. I know that this is possible. Let's just keep going. And it grew and it grew and, you know, it is what it is today, which is, you know, a different version of the ecstatic dance. It started back in 2008 in Oakland, um, but it keeps serving, you know, I think a lot of people came to Ecstatic Dance Oakland and got inspired and wanted to start a dance on their own. And um, I started teaching a training and helping people to start their own dances. And it's been a beautiful evolution over the 15 years. Um, and my evolution as a dancer, too, I've kind of branched out into, all right, the, here's this Ecstatic Dance practice, which is wonderful. But like, I want to learn more. I want to learn, you know, I want to be with a teacher and learn how to get more facilitation and learn how to have different experiences through dance. And so I started studying slow motion with Ben Marti, which is, I think, where we met. Mm -hmm. And then um, open floor with Andrea Johan. She's one of my teachers. And like these people, they just took me deeper and deeper. And Michael Skelton, who teaches both slow motion and open floor but these teachers just like took me deeper into the understanding of the healing that dance can create and so it was like me just continuing to go deeper inside and shed layers of of trauma and you know layers of past grief and release stories and um becoming lighter in the process and becoming myself in the process and you know, I, I'm still studying with these, a lot of these teachers, and I think it's just a lifelong journey. I think it's a beautiful thing. My journey now is moving in toward teaching myself, um, and so I think that that's kind of a natural progression after you do something for a while. You want to give back, right? Mm -hmm. So that's that's been a, a huge growth edge for me. Oh my God, lately. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, do I have, what do I have that I can say? And will people listen? And do they want to hear it? And can I help them in the ways that, you know, I've been helped through dance and looking up to these teachers and, you know, just hoping that I can make a difference through that, but feeling the call and feeling the need for it. Fantastic. So just slightly backtracking, how would you describe the ecstatic dance you did on the big island and what to someone who doesn't really know what is ecstatic dance. Uh, and then we can go into your deepening practice. 
Yeah, the ecstatic dance, it's a free form dance. And so there's no facilitation during the dance. Often there'll be a class before dance, but during the dance, there's no facilitation. And we bring in DJs that play kind of uh, a wave format. So they start slow and internal. And then throughout the two to three hour journey, the process just opens up and expands and the music gets faster and deeper and um, reaches like this peak that where everyone's just like really feeling the music and um, and then goes into a slower, like more internal space again. And so the idea of this, the main goal is um, not only for personal transformation, but to create an experience we call group flow. And that's when you probably felt it when you're on the dance floor and the whole dance floor is just like this one throbbing organism and you're just like so in sync with everybody on the dance floor and everybody's like flailing about but nobody's hitting each other because we can really like sense it's like we have these spidey senses and we can sense each other and there's this feeling of expansion and elation and joy and oneness with with the group and with the creator and with the room the space that's just so exquisite. And there are other ways you can find group flow, like at a sporting event with fans at a sporting event, or, you know, um, I experienced it in my cross country group when I was in high school running together. Like you're in, you know, playing any sports usually with people you can get in, you're in the zone, you know, you're in the pocket, you're just like, and, and it's this most incredible feeling. And so, Everything that I do for ecstatic dance when I produce events is to get the whole group to that experience. And even if we're only there for five minutes, it's still it's we're touching into creation itself. And that's it's the most exquisite feeling. And it's the the transformational experience where we move from self to expanded like we're all in this together, truly experience. And then, then you said, then you, you went the, the depth, going a little deeper with facilitation. What was, what told you to want to go deeper with that? And what, uh, what, how did that, did you have that same community doing the ecstatic dance and then, and then you would lead them at some point or like it was a different event that you would then offer to, you know, hey, come like, let's deepen this in a different process, a different space. Yeah, that's a really good question. You know, personally, my journey was, um, I had, I just had a lot of trauma to work through and I needed a guide to help get me through that, you know, and, and a lot of fear and particularly fear of other people, um, fear of getting close to other people, fear of being, being vulnerable. Um, I remember this one exercise that Andrea did, and it was like, we were looking in each other's eyes while, while moving. And she gave us the permission to not be like, staring at each other but to be listening to ourselves and when it became too uncomfortable to like reset and resource and I'd never had that experience before I would always just go outside of myself and just like do whatever it is that the other person wanted or the teacher wanted and then I would have this almost like an out-of-body experience I would like check out right um, because of the trauma and so in that, like the way in which she led this experience, it was so, um, I, I reached this really tender place in myself where I was, I wasn't abandoning myself probably for the first time in a very long time. I was able to stay with myself and be really um, present and gentle with myself. And I don't think that I could have gotten there without her facilitation. Um, in, in those exercises. And so it's really inspired me, you know, I mean, so many people have experienced ecstatic dance and have had incredible experiences and incredible transformations through ecstatic dance. And yet, like at a certain point, like there's more, you know, there's, there's more that we can do if we can open ourselves to being guided. And, and that's why I've like rebranded to be elixir dance. I want to really like expand to be a more kind of holistic uh, experience for people and a holistic company for people um, and be able to offer different kinds of things. And so that is like facilitation. Um, what we're doing right now is just offering a little bit of facilitation before the dance starts. Um, and I don't know what it's gonna morph into, I'm really listening. 
for what's needed and, and what people want. But that's that's what's happening right now. Um, but I think that there is an element like where that can really help with the, the transformation process. And then um, what are you finding? Uh, how how are you drawing? How are people drawn to the dance floor? How are, how are you know, people, how are you bringing people to the, you know, a, a mix of, I'm, I'm sure, a marketing or so to speak, or, you know, what, what is drawing people to the dance floor and maybe what are the challenges to getting people to the dance floor? Mm, yeah, I'm, I have marketing strategy and advisors helping with that, certainly. Um, but what's always worked and since I started in the beginning is, um, you know, giving people an experience that matters in their life and giving people a community that they care about and giving people like enough freedom to express themselves and enough safety that they can do all of that, right? And so when that formula is, gets when we get it right, then people are just drawn to it and then they bring other people. And of course they want their friends to experience it. Of course they want their family to experience it. And so they invite them onto the dance floor too. Um, you know, dance is a really hard thing for a lot of people. A lot of people have this instantly that you say the word dance and this wall comes up of like all the ideas around what dance is and that they can't dance. They certainly can't and they have no rhythm. And so, that's what originally comes up for a lot of folks or like they see shows like you think you can dance or something like that and they're like well I could never dance like that but what we're doing at ecstatic dance and elixir dance is something so very different from that it's more about the internal experience of the dance and how it can facilitate more presence in your life and how it can facilitate healing not like doing these steps that look good and you know we can all get into our like I want to look cool but that's at the heart of it that's really not what it's about so it's about like when you give someone an experience that's really potent and powerful and connecting then they want to come back and they want to bring people on and that's the best way to grow it and it has been a little bit challenging since COVID because there is that fear of um that people are going to you know, still catch a virus or get sick on the dance floor. And I've just found that that really hasn't been happening with people that are attending. And, and there's this need, like, that we, we need each other, you know, like, I think that, um, what, what is that? There's a statistic around, like, loneliness is more detrimental to your health than smoking a pack of cigarettes a day. Yeah, I heard that. Right, I, I might be getting it wrong, but it's something like that. It's something really wild, and like we have the cure to loneliness. Like, come dance. Mm -hmm. It's so easy. <laughs> it's so simple. It's simple. Mm -hmm. Maybe not easy for everyone, but it's like you know, we need each other. And I think you know, it, it can, dance enhances your immune system and like will help you fight off anything that that might be coming your way, anyways. So, yeah, it's 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 been a journey for sure. Um. The other thing too is, you know, some uh, people say, oh, that's just like, uh, you know, kind of a hippie new age thing. And some people say, I, that's a new, but then what I found on the dance floor is actually, that's a perception, but I, I find on the dance floor, um, right. it's okay. Um, such a variety of people show up of different ages that, um, you know, that they're, yeah, that's what I'm, finding and so people say oh that's kind of you know it's associated as like this free spirit kind of hippie thing to do but my experience on the dance floor is the people are really it's a right actually I don't know if that's your experience it's a, a diverse um, like you'll have old people you have young people people of different backgrounds and styles yeah excuse me sorry that's okay <laughs> um I think that you know, when we first started, we had a lot of early adopters that were showing up on the dance floor that were just like, had no idea what it was, but they were willing to try it, right? And, um, and that, 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 like, vision has kind of followed ecstatic dance, unfortunately, through the, through the years. But my experience has been like yours, too. 
like it's one of the only places where we have multi generations on the dance floor you know we have grandparents and then we have the youngsters at the same time and they're all dancing together and that rarely happens outside of family gatherings and that's just so powerful because when you have you know there's a need of the grandparents to be useful and offer support and there's a need of like we have women that are like single moms for example, like single moms to have their parent or their kids have grandparents. And so these, they, they like, they're forming these families, these family units that are chosen families. And it's really beautiful to have that. And so, you know, there is like that, that hippie vibe or there can be that like freedom vibe. And I think that that's just so misdirected because a lot of us don't know how to explain what we're experiencing. And so we're pulling from all this new age lingo. And it doesn't sound great to those people that are on the outside of this bubble, right? Yeah. And so the more that we can grow and get more intelligent about the language that we use and find better ways to describe our experiences, the more I think it will appeal to more people as well as just, um, you know, instead of just using new age lingo, new age terms, because there's there's so much that it offers. And I'm actually studying heart math right now, which is a technology um, to drop into your heart center and use the heart coherence. It's called heart coherence. So you become um, connected to your own heart and then your heart can become connected to other people's hearts. And this this technology is amazing because they found really um, powerful ways to describe what they're doing using the scientific terms and research that like anybody can really access. And I think we're starting to do that a little bit in dance, but we have a long way to go, certainly. Yeah, so true, because I find it, yeah, it's, it, even the word dance is kind of tough to call it dance because like, because of how preconceived ideas of dance that it's a partner dance, often partner dance when people think of dance or they think of uh, choreographed dance yeah. or something I have to do. Um, and so, yeah, then um, then the term ecstatic dance is like, oh, is, am I ecstatic all the time? <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> right. <laughs> what, what am I, you know, in that? And then I know that people have incorporated like somatic, you know, uh, or somatic or movement or consciousness, you know. And I think, like you said, we're, we're trying to, find new words or find ways to keep exploring what we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> I just looked that up, that uh, smoking, the, the uh, Oh, the cigarette thing? Yeah, prolonged isolation. It's a institute of aging uh, and isolation and prolonged, is prolonged isolation and loneliness are equals up to 15 cigarettes a day. Whoa. Yeah, wow. 15. Yeah. That's a lot of cigarettes. That's crazy. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. And then we've all gone through this COVID with this yeah. isolation and loneliness. Right. right. Um, and I mean, I know the life expectancy has dropped just from people who have passed from COVID, but um, the effect of COVID. If you the think, effect of the isolation is, yeah. I think, um, more intense than the effect of the COVID in some regards right yeah, yeah. and yeah. so yeah the power of dance community uh, yeah. yeah needed more than ever <laughs> yeah yeah we do we we definitely do and um you know I also I I find that ecstatic dance is it it can be really beautiful because there's no talking so people with kind of any social anxiety it's like and no one's making you do anything so if you you know if anyone has social anxiety it's really a little bit easier for them to enter into it they, you can sit on the sidelines and watch until you're ready to move you can dance in your own space you can dance with others like there's just so many options for folks that you know if they can get over the initial like shock of the word dance it can be a really uh, potent experience mm -hmm. And I do find it's it's nice to potentially have an opening or closing circle to kind of re-engage yeah. people because often you can dance, but then 
you relate and know that person, but it's nice to take it back and, and get to know them. You know, what was your experience in words and, and what did you feel? Uh, yeah, it really helps. And, you know, over time, what we're doing in Mountain View is we have a, a sharing circle at the end and it's so beautiful. Over time, it's like you get to know each other. And I was just saying last night, it's like we're, we're making a quilt together. And each time we like stitch one more piece of like one more square of the quilt. And by sharing our stories, by sharing our dances, by sharing our experiences. And so it's like over time, you just get to know each other a little bit and a little bit. And, little bit. and the more courageous that we can be around sharing what's really up for us in a vulnerable way, the the deeper the experience can be for us but we have to have we have to be willing to to step into that courageousness of sharing yeah i think that's a vital aspect to it of, of kind of the share at the end and because you'll dance you you're having your own universal ex universe of experience and then to then relate you know when you're looking at someone else who, as they're dancing and it's nice to go you know oh i was you know, some person could be like, I'm quiet and doing this really private dance. And then they express later, I was so full of joy. Uh -huh. Like, oh, wow. Like what you were, I thought you're just into something somber or, so, you know, mm -hmm. but you're actually like really into this place of joy or, you know, someone could be looking really expressive and they're saying, I felt, you know, I felt really um, scared. And you're like, oh, but you seem so expressive, but you, right. you, you said you're shy. And so it's interesting to have that share that communication yeah it is really interesting and I think we especially on a dance floor where there's no talking like we make up stories about each other you know and it, it's really fascinating and those and then the the sharing kind of brings us back into kind of empathy and just like oh wow okay you know we are we are more alike than we're different yeah but yeah because it's somebody who could you don't because we're also, some people are more seasoned dancers and are more comfortable in their bodies. And so they could be expressing something that we're like, wow, that really looks good. Like you're really expressive. You really do. Then I don't get to know that, oh, you were maybe, maybe actually you're, you were feeling more insecure than I was, even yeah. though I don't feel as into my body, I, you know, and that's kind of nice to, to have that, to break that perception that we often have. Yeah. 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 I agree. So you did uh, some training on the open floor and soul motion. Um, what are you finding that you, when you explore different modalities and, and creating your own path, um, what's that been like for you? <laughs> it's been a journey, just yeah. like, just like creating anything. It's, you know, there's the, this, this whole process that you go through and like, my experience and my creative process is that like it has to be chaotic and messy before I can create order but I don't really like chaotic and messy I just like order like I like to like organize and put all my boxes and everything you know and so like the the chaos and creative part I've learned over the years to like let myself be steeped in that long enough before I like try to make order from it and so um, I'm kind of in that space right now. I'm just like um, letting myself get the creative freedom to be messy and then like wrangling it into order. And I'm working with a coach right now. Her name's Taya and she's incredible. She's really helping me to, to trust myself and my own wisdom when I can really have a lot of insecurities around, around that, around like, you know, what do I have to, to teach? And, the truth is I've been doing this for 15 years. I probably have something to teach, um, you know? And um, I've taught other things. I've taught acro yoga and I've taught Kundalini yoga. And those things are all very structured and they have a very like clear, like this is how to do it right. And this is how to do it wrong. And in dance and what I'm trying to bring forth and elicit is there is no way to do it wrong. It's just helping people get into this deep experience of themselves and what they're feeling. And so it's it's so completely different from anything I've taught before that 
it's kind of, um, it's been a fun exploration, but it's definitely challenged my edges. And I'm so grateful to have a coach to work with. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you're, you're, you're stretching on your path, but you're bringing in coaches and teachers and supporters to, to support you on your path. So many people just do it alone. Oh, yeah, I think, um, yeah, it, you can get there probably without a coach, but it'll take you 10 times as long. And, you know, I, I don't know, I, I've, I've always done that. I think it's really, um, yeah, coaches, when you get the right ones, they're like therapists, they're so valuable, you know, they give you insights that you could never have on your own. And I actually just taught, um, I had I did a day long elixir dance experience uh, a couple of weeks ago and I taught there. And you know what was amazing was what I taught, it was really a simple exercise and it got the whole group moving together. But what was amazing to me was I just taught for half an hour and the whole dance after that, we did an ecstatic dance after that, the whole dance floor was so completely changed. Like everyone was so much more connected and more playful and more like able to dance together and move together in different ways. And, and this is what I'm realizing what well, my coach is helping me realize, like it can be so simple. Like the exercises can be so simple, but so profound. Yeah. Like they can change everything, you know? And yeah, I'd never seen the dance floor there that like alive and connected. It was cool. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, yeah it's it's fascinating the, the the world of ecstatic dance and freeform dance that it's something that is kind of elusive and mysterious and hard to describe or to someone or or almost like hard to state the benefits to to someone that doesn't do it. Mm -hmm. um, and then when you do it, it's like, wow, this is really profound. And, and you know, most people go away being like, this was transformation. You know, the words people use are, it was transformational. It was, you know, I worked through deep trauma. It, it was more than talk therapy. You know, it's like, there's so many things that come from it. That's like, wow, this is something profound. And yet it's something that often it's hard. It's been hard for a lot of teachers or, or the community to communicate that to people to potentially bring them into this new thing, you know, mm -hmm. or potentially invite them into this experience, you know, where, you know, even a lot of, um, a lot of, you know, even seasoned teachers are, are struggle financially to, to make it work. Um, yeah. And so I find that a fascinating edge of mystery of like, how does this become, and how does this continue to grow to be something that, you know, really supports a community of coaches and, and teachers and facilitators in a way that's like, oh, I believe it's possible, you know, and yeah, I think that yeah. it's, it's interesting. Yeah, we're, we're working on that. I think a big yeah. piece is learning to, to use language yeah. that's more relatable. I think that's a huge piece, and I think so many people just miss that. Like, let's use language that's more relatable. Yeah. 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 But it, it's the experience of embodiment. You know, once you can bring people into this experience of really listening to their bodies and and tapping into their body's wisdom and once they can experience like what that means for their lives like the creativity that they can feel the connection that they can feel the, the presence where they're not living in the past and you know ruminating or living in the present and planning for the present and the anxiety of that where they're just present like that's embodiment and that that will change everything and you don't have to change anything else in your life but it will change your whole world you know it'll change how you relate to your coworkers. it'll change how you relate to your family it'll change I mean the deeper I get into this stuff I can't even tell you like my relationship with my mom lately it's it's been so sweet it's been so connected and just so and I and that was all like me just being able to like let go of shit that like bothered me for 44 years <laughs> you know like and because I've been working through this place of like you know I don't need that I don't I don't need the expectation that anyone in my life be different mm -hmm. and um 
that's all embodiment. It's all embodiment. And it's, it's, yeah, it's just, it's a practice. And the more people that do it, the better our world's going to be. I mean, don't you like you leave a dance and you're like, shit, if the whole world did this, like if our politicians did this, if our, you know, if our school kids did this in school, it's like the world would literally change, you know? Yes. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, because we, we get the we get to use the the dance floor as a space to express and work through uh, emotions or feelings that we don't have a space to do it elsewhere. Like you know, maybe it's we have a feeling of like I'm just so angry or I feel rage, and we could just like work through. Like I remember there's a point in my life I was kind of de- I was I'm not kind of I was really depressed, and I remember I got on the dance floor and. I didn't tell anybody, but internally there was a part of me just like going, fuck off, fuck off, fuck off to all these pe- things and people in my mind and, and, mm-hmm. and both personal and external, just like, fuck off, fuck off, fuck off, fuck off, fuck off, you know? And that was like a dance. And I realized I was just like setting my own internal boundary. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, all of a sudden, okay, I worked through that. And I was like, oh, like I'm kind of over it, you know? And not yeah. that it was over forever, but it was like, it, it resolves something in me to be mm-hmm. authentic and be mm-hmm. intuitive. Like, you know what? I want to say this, or, you know, not to anyone else, but to this moment, to these feelings. And that's, you know, it's not, it doesn't feel enlightening to be like telling all these <laughs> things, but it was cathartic Yeah. that then I can then go, oh, okay. Okay. Actually not really fuck off to those people. Like everyone's right. on their own journey and oh, yeah. wow, now I'm in myself. I'm in my body, you know? Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's like the, um, I talk about it like chains. It's almost like we have these chains wrapped around us so tightly and they're from society and they're from our parents and they're from ourselves and our own expectations. And they just like, they get tighter and tighter and tighter. And like the dance lets us like just burst through those with the the fuck off dance. I've done the fuck off dance so many times. (laughs) Oh my God. And it's just, and sometimes like the more I do it, the more I don't even need to put a story to it. The more it's just like, it's feeling and just like, ah, and, you know, go with it. And then it passes. It's like, you know, they say emotions are like the weather, right? 90 seconds. If we are really fully feeling an emotion in 90 mm-hmm. seconds, it'll pass. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, we get the chance to fully feel and experience that emotion on the dance floor. Yeah, it passes. I danced the board dance so many times. I've been dancing that a lot lately. Like, I'm just so bored. And then, and then something will like spark my interest. Maybe it's just like my finger and my finger is moving in this way. And then I'm like, get fascinated by my finger and it moves me out of the board dance, you know? Uh And it's just, and then like, that's my portal in, or maybe it's like, oh, catch an eye, another dancer, and then we'll start doing something. That's my portal into something other than boredom, but I need the boredom dance first. I can't just jump into the, the interesting thing. Right. Mm -hmm. Or, um, the sad dance, I, I dance that, you know, or you're just like, uh, or the like, I'm so tired dance, or, <laughs> you know, like, God, I dance that one a lot too. Um, I recently stopped drinking coffee, so I've just been like, oh, <laughs> oh that's <laughs> and, a hard one. Good job. I know, right? <laughs> and then the, but then it's like, oh, I learned through the movement of just like, oh, I can source my energy from the dance floor. I can source my energy from the music. I can source my energy from my own body or from another person or, you know, get inspiration from other places. And so it's really cool to, to practice that on the dance floor. And then when I, you know, I, I think we get to practice these things on the dance floor so that when we walk off the dance floor, we can take them into our lives. And it's such a beautiful place to practice things. I'm just like, you know, I remember when I was first learning dance um, and first at ecstatic dance in Hawaii, like I had not never had an experience of sensuality in my body and feeling my body as really truly a sensual experience. You know, I had just done like sports where I push my body or yo- even yoga for me, it was an experience of like getting the pose, doing it right, and then like pushing through whatever resistance I had. And um, on the dance floor, I was like able to really experience this like fluidity and sensuality and um, where it just felt so good to move in my body for the first time ever. 
and it was so safe for me to do it there you know nobody was bothering me I was just like in my own space like unwinding these years of like conditioning and um you know and that's an experience where like um we can practice that in a space that feels safe like I wouldn't go to you know a nightclub and practice that that wouldn't be a safe space for me to practice that I wouldn't practice that you know but do you know I might practice it alone in my home but doing it in where there's others around that changes things too that like heightens the experience in a different way too and helps us to integrate it with our life outside and the outside world as well yeah and I think that's uh a space that the dance floor and the dance community has had to work to make a good space for the, you yeah. know, we're talking about when we're into our central selves, it, to create that space where there's consent and we, you know, and created boundaries so that we can go deep. Because I, like I know for myself, when I first started dance, um, you know, that you get aroused, like your, your body's getting aroused, you're getting excited and sometimes, like, and because you, you start really moving your body in a mm -hmm. sensual way and you can get excited and arousal and in the beginning this is my experience and mm -hmm. then like oh you oh look at their body and look at their body Ooh, like it's exciting and whoa whoa but to go instead of reacting to, like um going after those feelings so to speak but to like okay i'm going to keep embodying that you move from uh, at least this is my it's like you move from a, a and you keep dancing maybe consistently over time I found like you move past the sexual part into the sensual and into mm -hmm. the like the feeling good and like I feel good I don't it's almost like you're not seeking and grabbing grasping it it's like oh that and it's like the body almost sinks into a new place of like oh this is good and yeah we have it we're this is innate in us. this is good yeah. this is we can yeah. have this you know yeah yeah we can live from this this place of feeling good and we can um you know, keep that energy for ourselves and, you know, maybe appreciate it in other people, but we don't, like you were saying, we don't have to go and grasp it and try to get it, right? It's like we cultivate it from within through the dance and through our experience and it's ours and we carry it with us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, lo I love the, I, I kind of going back to like the idea of like how, what draws people to dance for, what keeps them away from the dance for, you know, it's like this piece of like, I almost ask almost probably a, a large percentage of people if you said do you do you want to dance do you would you like to dance you know there's a like yeah there's a, a part of you that goes yes like da like dance goes yeah but there also seems to be a part that goes uh no no no, no. <laughs> yeah and i don't know if you want to talk what you you notice about that it's like that it, it's innate there's something innate that, that we really want that it's primal like like mm. we we know this is like part of being our stuff like yes this is us and then there's also part that's like oh no i don't i don't think yeah. so <laughs> yeah that's a really good question you know you put on a song and you have little kids around and what do they do yeah they dance they can't help themselves but dance like it's in our nature it's in all of our nature right and then at some point the inner critic comes on and says no you can't dance and you know people have different experiences around why you know a lot of people have dance trauma of, like they were told it was bad or they were told they, they couldn't do it well or they think they have to do it a certain way and so that's true with any art form you know and, and dance is an art form it's it's freedom it's free form it's you know um and so that's true of I'm a writer that's true of writing and then the inner critic comes on and all of a sudden like you can't write shit you can't even write any words you know um and then it's true of any kind of art form and so you know I think that the only way to get through that is to just do it yeah. that's the only way through like you can't think your way out of the inner critic you have to move through that experience and you just have to keep moving and keep moving and keep moving and keep moving and let it like let the inner critic work on you and it will it'll tell you like mine tells me like 
oh, you're thirsty. You need to get some water. You're dehydrated. You definitely need to hydrate yourself. Like, oh, you don't like this song. Oh, this song sucks. Like, oh, this song's too loud. Oh, this person stinks. Like, whatever. Like, it's telling you all these things to get you to stop <laughs> dancing, right? And that's yeah. like your ego trying to like keep a hold because it knows that once you bust through of that, then you're going to have freedom and you're going to have choice and you're going to have like um, a sense of freedom in your life that it, it doesn't want you to have. And so the only way through is to move. And, you know, it's really hard. I think I see it on the dance floor. I see new people come and they're like, it's their first time they tend to be like kind of timid, not everyone, but you know, I watch people and sometimes this happens. They, they can be like kind of timid. They're looking around like, who's looking at me? Do I look better than this person? Do I look worse than that? But whatever they're doing, right? Like am I in the right outfit? Like, and then like, if they stick with it, if they stay on the dance floor and stay dancing, then they're gonna, they break through inevitably and their dance completely changes and their expression changes and there's more, fluidity there's more um their movements become bigger the um you know they become more aware of their surroundings and their 360 awareness and it's like it's so cool to watch and to feel and to experience too but the only way through is by moving yeah. i love that yeah and i love the the, uh, the art form of it you know it's like in yeah. painting or whatever it's like you go oh is this painting you know is it realism impressionism you know like oh that's painting oh is this painting is right you know, it's like right. dancing like oh these are this is what dancing oh but what about this is this dancing? right it's this dancing? Yeah. yeah yeah it's the same with writing like the only way through the inner critic is to just keep writing we call it a shitty first draft you just have yeah. to write yeah like you you can't think think it through you can't yeah. wait for like the inspiration moment the muse to like you know, give you the download that happens sometimes, but like, if you're really committed to it, like you can't wait for that. You have to just show up. Yeah. And just go with the impulse, go with the, you know, I think Ben said what that thing of like, just dance ugly, you know, just, yeah. Yeah. Be, I think he said dance ugly and drool. Maybe he didn't yeah, say dance. that, but there's like t-shirts so, yeah. that say that dance ugly and drool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> which, I love. Yeah. which when you're really into it, sometimes like yeah. you, you really are like drooling. But it's like it's the most ex exquisite thing though. When you see someone who's like really in their dance, even if they're dancing really weird, it's so beautiful, right? Yeah. It's just yeah. like oh, wow, just expression. Yeah. That is the beauty of it is, is then when you, you do look, you can, you you look up and you see these so many different bodies in different ways of expression. It's, it's yeah. beautiful. The human tapestry. Yeah, it is. That's a beautiful way to describe it. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. And so, um, I'm thinking of where, what the, <laughs> where to take, so uh, what, what are you up to these days? What's, what's next for you? What are you doing with your, with your, um, program? Yeah, I'm still building Elixir Dance and um, trying to offer more day longs. I have a day long coming up um, in Mountain View where like we give people this experience of um, Korean Taoist yoga. We start with that, which has my, been my morning practice lately. It's called Sundo. And it's just this really beautiful way to like, um, it's deep breathing and it, it um, taps into your energy centers and centers you and calms you. And so we start with that. My partner teaches it. And, um, and then we move into, I do some teaching around embodiment and different kinds of ways to move on the dance floor and getting the group moving together. And then we move into an ecstatic dance. Um, and then we do sound healing after that. Mm -hmm. So people, so it's like, there's this active, movement and then this whole receptive energy where you can just receive the benefits of the practice and um the sound healing is it's it's an, an incredible way to help people just really let go and and the vibrations change the cellular structure of people's bodies so it's so deeply healing to be in that space and so and then we have lunch together and so that's a really cool chance of like people getting to know each other and then we do it all again in the afternoon and it's just you know it's just a deeper experience of the dance and a deeper experience of embodiment and then um doing like weekend retreats in the santa cruz mountains i'm doing a lot of stuff locally which i feel really called to um be cultivating like a 
a local community in the Bay Area and doing less traveling and less internationally and just like there's so much here so much um opportunity and so many people that need this here so I'm just sticking around and I'm teaching in this area but um yeah that's that's what I'm going to do these days Fantastic. oh and I, I don't want to say this but yeah. because then everyone's going to hold me to it but I'm learning to DJ too yeah <laughs> right on <laughs> so that's been a whole journey in and of itself too of like yes. well what music should I play and then like throwing that out the window I mean like what do I like what do yes. I feel called to and what elicits something in me and trusting that whole process yes yeah I I the part that I love about the DJing uh Kate Sheila who does 360 emergence you know it's like when you're DJing you can you can loop a piece yeah. And go, you know, and go deep, like, okay, you know, instead of doing a song, you kind of dissect the song a bit and say, well, let's go deep here and keep this kind of crunchy thing happening. Mm -hmm. And then, and then move through it. So it's, it's a nice tool that you, you're taking on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good luck with that. Thank you. <laughs> cool. Well, thank you for coming on this call. Yeah, yeah really enjoyed it. Great. Yeah, yeah, thank you, you know, for doing this. Yeah, it's like a dance too. It's like I, I'm like I don't know what we're gonna talk about. <laughs> you know, can I, can I sustain a conversation past ten minutes? Well, uh, what's nice is it oh, happens. Yeah. It starts to yeah. go. Oh yeah, she's saying. You know, I'm right. listening. I'm like, oh, that's yeah. interesting. Let's go deeper. Yeah. So yeah. thank you. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, I hope to dance with you again soon. Yeah, that'd be wonderful. I have to come yeah. down to the Bay Area. Yeah, you got a great community down there. So yeah we do all right well good luck with everything and good luck with your retreats they sound exquisite I, I, oh yeah thank amazing. you yeah oh thanks so much adam all right i'll talk to you again soon thanks okay take care take care bye, bye.